The mitochondria are also involved in cellular differentiation, so that's hyperplasia, cell growth, hypertrophy, and cell death, apoptosis. Now, ATP production isn't exclusive to the mitochondria alone. The human body can actually produce a decent amount of ATP by themselves through glycolysis or beta oxidation. Vigor Steve here with the mitochondrial support stack. Sorry it took so long, it's been a whole year in the making. I had to do a ton of research, a lot of self-experimentation. I spent thousands of dollars trying to piece all of this together. And now that I look back on it, it's not only about improving mitochondrial functioning, it's also about anti-aging and longevity and feeling a lot better, being a lot more productive, optimizing fat loss. So all of the components which are going into this stack, I feel are highly beneficial, but that also means this stack can be quite expensive. So we're going to break all of the costs down as well. Some of the drugs or medications or supplements are nice to have, but not essential for this protocol to work. So we'll discuss all of that during this video as well, which are essential, which are nice uh, beneficial additions, and which are you know a little bit wishy-washy with minimal scientific evidence, but could still be a worthy addition, depending on your preference and your overall goals. We'll discuss all of that in this video. If you like these kinds of deep dives, consider signing up for the Patreon. Videos like this would not be possible without my Patreon. So for everybody that's already signed up, thank you guys so much. The next video, which I'm going to do, the next deep dive is going to be the DHEA and Pregnenolone deep dive. Give me a couple days, maybe a week or two to prepare for that. And then we'll go further down the list with all of the deep dives, which I mentioned on the Patreon page, where you guys can actually vote on which deep dive I do next. But before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Share this video with a friend who needs a boost in mitochondrial function too, so they can feel five to 10 years younger, just like I do. Well, so let's start there. That's exactly how I feel after running this extensive stack, depending on which compounds I'm running, I feel anywhere between five to 10 years younger. I'm about 39, 40 years old right now. So I can safely say that I feel approximately 30 years old most of the time that I'm running this protocol. And that's a huge step forward for me, even though I'm aging backwards, basically. My productivity is up, my sense of well-being is up, my overall energy levels are way up. Basically, everything has improved. My bodybuilding has improved. I need to use less performance-enhancing drugs than I did in the past to sustain the same level of muscularity. Most of the enzymatic reactions within my body have now been optimized and function correctly for a person who's approximately, let's say, 30 years old. So all of that combined really improved the quality of my life. But I will say that this protocol, especially at the top level of doing the intramuscular and intravenous administrations, is highly, highly expensive. At the bottom end, like the most basic mitochondrial support stack, you would already spend $200 a month, give or take. And at the higher levels, you will spend at least $1,000 per month. So we'll break all of that down and discuss that in this video. Don't be discouraged if you don't have that much of a disposable income to improve your mitochondrial functioning. It's still an interesting watch. And again, you just have to keep it in the back of your head. Maybe I don't have 200 extra dollars per month to spend on this protocol right now. But once you become more financially secure and you realize that a mitochondrial support stack could actually be a very worthy return of investment, you spend the extra $200, you feel better, you look better, your blood work is better, your anabolism is better, and your overall bodybuilding journey is better, you're more productive, you're in a better state of health, you're in better mood continuously. All of the good things you would expect from a protocol like this, the $200 to $1,500 that you'll spend on it, will pay back with dividends, tenfold, I would say. So keep that in mind. It's still, it's an interesting watch for those of you that are not that financially secure yet, just keep it in the back of your head. Maybe one day you'll be able to give this a try. And when you do, you'll feel just as good as I do. So let's start with what the mitochondria actually are. I'm sure you've heard over and over and over again that the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. That's actually the name of a study which first described the functioning of the mitochondria. I'll overlay that right now. Basically what the mitochondria do is they produce ATP, which is indeed the energy currency of the cell. Your cell needs ATP to survive and fulfill all the physiological functions that that particular cell needs to do within the human body. The mitochondria are actually a separate organism. They're not part of your genetic makeup. The mitochondria have their own circular DNA, so that's actually a circle. Whereas with humans, you have DNA containing X and Y genomes with genes and chromosomes, which all need to be uncurled for normal DNA transcription, resulting in messenger RNA and peptides 
downstream. And the mitochondria fulfill similar functions. They have mitochondrial derived peptides, which can actually permeate from the mitochondria into the surrounding cell. So even though it's extracellular compared to a mitochondria itself, it's still intracellular peptides because they remain within the cell of the host body. So this is how you have to look at it. The mitochondria are a separate life form with its own DNA that has its own biological functions, one of which is producing ATP. But the host body, the human body, or any other living organism that contains mitochondria, which is the very large majority of the organisms on the planet, they, f they supply nutrients for the mitochondria to function. And the mitochondria, in return, supplies ATP for the host body to use as energy. So it's a symbiotic relationship, sort of say. Most of the cells in the human body contain mitochondria, except the red blood cells, for example. But the liver, each liver cell, contains over 2,000 mitochondria cell by cell. So if you look at the liver at its whole, it contains millions, if not trillions, of separate mitochondria, which are all producing ATP simultaneously. So you need to treat these mitochondria with the utmost respect, because without mitochondria, you would really die in a matter of minutes, because ATP turnover is very, very fast, and it doesn't stay sustained more than several minutes at a time. Now, besides the primary function of the mitochondria to supply the cell with energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, the mitochondria are also involved in cell signaling. So the mitochondrial-derived peptides can actually end up in systemic circulation and act as an endocrine peptide hormone. The mitochondria are also involved in cellular differentiation, so that's hyperplasia, cell growth, hypertrophy, and cell death, apoptosis. Now, ATP production isn't exclusive to the mitochondria alone. The human body can actually produce a decent amount of ATP by themselves through glycolysis or beta oxidation. With glycolysis, it's a 10-step enzymatic reaction that converts either glucose or glycerol into pyruvate. Glycerol is a backbone that stores triglycerides into adipose tissue. And when you liberate these triglycerides, the glycerol also gets liberated, which is then readily used through glycologists for ATP synthesis. But through glycolysis, there's not enough ATP synthesis for the cell to function normally. So some of the metabolites in the form of acetylcoenzyme A metabolites actually diffuse into the mitochondria to be used in the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, and produce a significant amount of ATP downstream. And beta oxidation breaks down fatty acids into acetylcoenzyme A metabolites as well. These can also be used in the Krebs cycle for further ATP synthesis. For beta oxidation to work, your body requires carnitine for the transport of fatty acids. And the Krebs cycle, which is also known as the citric acid cycle, is a series of chemical reactions that release stored energy through oxidation of the acetylcoenzyme A metabolites formed from carbohydrates, fats, or even proteins, albeit that proteins are rarely, rarely used for direct energy production. In a lot of cases, proteins are either converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis, and the glucose is then converted into ATP or acetylcoenzyme A metabolites through glycolysis, which happens outside of the mitochondria. So pay that no mind, protein is rarely used for direct energy production. Most products that go through the Krebs cycle are actually carbohydrate or fat metabolites. Oxidative phosphorylation occurs at the later stages of the Krebs cycle, in which case the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis actually convert and produce the most amounts of ATP in this entire Krebs cycle. Most of the steps on the Krebs cycle are heavily reliant on NAD plus or NADH, and they all occur within the mitochondria themselves. So long story short, when you look at ATP synthesis, what are you going to need? You're going to need oxygen, you're going to need NAD plus or NADH, at which you can supplement NAD plus through supplementation or IV administrations, and carnitine, which you can also take in supplemental form or through IV administrations. And for oxygen, well, all you need to do is breathe. And even the oxygen consumption, also known as cellular or mitochondrial respiration, we can actually manipulate that with some of the supplements, which we'll discuss at the end of this mitochondrial support stack. A fun fact about the mitochondria is that they seem to be responsive to estrogens. And even though the effect of anabolic androgenic steroids has been well documented on mitochondria, which would be a whole separate video just by itself, so we're just going to give that an honorable mention here, all things considering, testosterone has a positive effect on mitochondrial function, and so does estrogen. 
Estrogen actually has a nuclear effect on gene expression within the mitochondria and improves uh, mitochondrial biogenesis, the mitochondrial DNA transcription, and even has a regulatory role in apoptosis of the mitochondria themselves. So long story short, if you want optimized mitochondrial functioning, you need optimized hormone balance. Now, I made several different videos about how to optimize your hormone balance, whether that's in the context of staying drug-free, so that's without exogenous testosterone and other ancillaries in the picture, or actually going on hormone replacement therapy. That will be a video for you to watch after this one. I'll link that at the end. Still, long story short, improving steroidal genesis or overall hormone balance within the body is highly beneficial for mitochondrial functioning. So for all of the guys that are already on TRT and got their testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, and estrogens covered, you guys are on the right track.